Sean, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. I know you used to teach a class at Harvard called Happy, but now you started a company called Good Think. What led to that change? Well, over the past uh, seven years, I've traveled to 51 countries looking to see what causes people to feel happier. And I think traveling to all those places really made me realize that our definition of happiness was wrong, that if it's about pleasure that happens after a success, it doesn't last for very long because success is a moving target. But if we could find some way of creating happiness now, what I found is that those deep relationships we have with people, that optimism, the belief that our behavior matter, those are the things that really cause us to experience not just short-term happiness, but long-term happiness. You know, Sean, why is traveling so important to happiness? Well, uh, we're coming up on travel season, and I had seen some previous research from the Netherlands that showed that travel, the average vacation, actually causes people to feel less happy, um, which is a, a surprise because I think we normally associate happiness and travel together. And um, we know that so few Americans uh, actually travel, so part of what I wanted to find out is uh, what's going on there. So I did a study of 400 uh, travelers to find out what it was that was causing people to feel happiness on trips, and it turns out what was causing the unhappiness was not the travel, it was the travel stress. And that if we could eliminate some of that travel stress in very strategic ways, we found that 94% of vacations could cause people to feel higher levels of happiness and energy on those trips. All right, Sean, I hope you have the cure. How can we reduce the stress as we travel? Yeah, well, we found some interesting things. The first one was that, uh, uh, you know, sometimes I, I plan at the last minute, but we found that the people who plan all the, the travel details a month before the, the, the vacation, we found that 90% of them had the happiest levels of trips. Um, so planning beforehand was extremely crucial. 28% of the worst trips, people were still planning on the trip that they were on. Um, the second one was we found that uh, traveling far from home. We found 84% of the happiest vacations occurred outside of the country, which confirms previous research we had seen from Twitter, which showed that the further your posts were from your home, the happier the posts actually were. But then the most important thing we found was to know somebody at the location. We know that social support is the greatest predictor of happiness we have. And if you have a local host or a friend at the destination you're traveling to, not only does that make you feel that connection, but you feel uh, safer, you feel like you know more about the area. We actually uh, came across a fantastic company called Monograms, which in addition to planning out all those travel details, puts local hosts in each of the destinations so that you, wherever you travel, you could actually have that social connection. Well, that is fascinating research, and I'm going to have to try out that service that helps locate someone that can help make it feel like a local experience when we travel. But when it comes to social media, are we spending too much time there? That's a fantastic question. Um, I think it's about how we use the social media, because if we're following people on Twitter and Facebook that we never meet up with, then it's a direct trade-off with that social connection that we could feel. But when we use it to deepen our social knowledge, to find out who's having babies or who just went on a fantastic vacation, then when we actually meet up with our friends or with our family members, even if they're weaker ties, we know more social information, which can deepen social connection. So what we found is it's how you use the social media. Interesting indeed, Sean. What you do is so awesome. Can you leave us with a challenge when it comes to ultimate happiness? I think a, a decade of research comes down to this conclusion that most of us follow the wrong formula for happiness. We keep thinking, today if I work harder, I'm going to be more successful and then I'll feel happier. But it doesn't work. Um, success is a moving target. Every time we hit it, our brain changes what success looks like. So if happiness is after success, we never get there. But if you flip around the formula, if today you start to create habits that cultivate happiness in your life, cultivate greater optimism and deepen social connection, it turns out we can improve every single one of your business and educational outcomes and raise your success rates as well. Always so insightful, Sean. Thank you so, so much for joining us. Thank you, Con.